Hello my dear friends, welcome to Nurses Ladder. So today in this video, I will be taking a lecture on appendicitis. So before moving into this video, if there is anyone who is a new viewer to my channel and also you are interested to watch videos related to nursing education and nursing career, then you can subscribe to my channel and as soon as you subscribe, you also have to press the bell icon for getting all notifications related to all of the new videos. So my dear friends, let's start this video. So before moving into the details of appendicitis, let us learn what is an appendix. An appendix is a finger-like appendage. The measurement or dimension of appendix is 10 centimeters or 4 inches. If you see the functions of appendix, Usually, appendix will be filled with food and it empties this food into the cecum. Let's see where appendix is located. Appendix is a part of gastrointestinal system. It is located as a continuation of cecum. So, here it is mentioned, cecum again, it is a part of large intestine. So it is provided, the details are provided here. So this part is cecum and below that there is a finger like structure that is appendix and above that there is ascending colon, transverse colon and here it is descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and anus. So these are parts of large intestine. Let us see really where this appendix is located. So, as you all know, there are four quadrants of abdomen. One is right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant and left lower quadrant. So, where is our appendix located? It is located in the right lower quadrant. So, the location of appendix is in the right lower quadrant. Then, if you see the lumen of appendix, the lumen of appendix is usually small. So, this small lumen of appendix creates risk for this organ to have discharge this session in detail about appendicitis. So, what is an appendicitis? Appendicitis is the inflammation of appendix. Let us see what causes appendicitis. So for that we need to learn about the pathophysiology of appendicitis. So as soon as the appendix get kinked or obstructed. So this kinking or obstruction could be caused by a fecolith. Fecolith, fecolith is nothing but a hardened mass of stool or it can be due to tumor or it can be due to a foreign body. This causes increase in the intraluminal pressure which again causes abdominal pain in the right lower quadrant where appendix is located. This causes or this may result in filling of appendix with pus. Let us see what are the clinical features or symptoms which a patient may experience during acute appendicitis? The first and foremost sign or symptom is low grade fever. So the temperature would be either 37 degrees Celsius or 100 degree Fahrenheit. Then other than that, there will be nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, Rebound tenderness, signs of appendicitis, abdominal distension and constipation. Friends, let us see the signs of appendicitis. This is a major important area of this particular lecture. So let us see one by one. The first one is rebound tenderness. So what is a rebound tenderness? Rebound tenderness is a tenderness of pain which is felt after or as soon as a deep palpation is performed. Next, 
McBurney's point. So what is a McBurney's point? Where is it located? McBurney's point is located in the right lower quadrant. It's, it is a point of attachment of appendix with the cecum. It is located in a area or point which is 2 by 3rd of the distance between umbilicus and anterior superior iliac spine. This pain can progress up to 4 to 6 hours. The next sign is Rolfsing sign. So what is the Rolfsing sign? It is a pain or tenderness which is felt in the right lower quadrant after the left lower quadrant is deeply palpated. Another sign is obturator sign. So what is the obturator sign? It is the pain in the right lower quadrant which is elicited when there is a passive internal rotation of the right hip with flexion of hip and knees. This results in the internal rotation of femur. Another sign is psoas sign. So what is psoas sign? It is a sign or it's a pain which is felt in the right lower quadrant when there is a extension or flexion of the right hip against resistance. So this indicates that the inflamed appendix is located along the course of the right psoas muscle. The next sign is Dunphy's sign. So what is Dunphy's sign? So it is a pain which is felt in the right lower quadrant as soon as the patient coughs. So this indicates peritonitis. Another sign is Blumberg's sign. So what is a Blumberg's sign? So it is a sign or it is a pain which is felt in the lower abdomen after abrupt withdrawal of hand from the lower abdominal quadrant. Mm. So this particular sign was described by Jacob mm. Moritz Blumberg who was a German surgeon. Next is Bastido sign. So what is a Bastido sign? It is a sign or it is a pain which is felt in the right iliac fossa. This sign indicates the presence of chronic appendix. The sign is Baldwin sign. So what is a Baldwin sign? It is a pain which is felt in the flank region when the right hip is flexed. So this indicates a retrocecal appendix which is inflamed. Other than these signs, there could be an abdominal distension. So when there is an abdominal distension, we need to be extremely careful because it may indicate a rupture of appendix. Let us see which areas are related to location of pain in appendix. The first one would be pain in the lumbar region. So if a patient is experiencing pain in the lumbar region, it indicates that the appendix is curling round behind the C cup. Another example would be a patient who is experiencing pain while the examiner is doing a rectal examination or the doctor or the physician is doing a rectal examination. So this indicates that the tip of the appendix is located near to the pelvis. Some patients may experience pain while defecation. So if anyone or if a patient is experiencing like that, then it may indicate that the tip of the appendix is located near the rectum. Another example could be that of urination. So if a patient is experiencing pain while urinating, then it may indicate that the tip of the appendix is located near the urinary bladder or the ureter. So these are different areas of location of pain in case of appendicitis. Let us see what are the laboratory uh, findings or investigations related to appendicitis. The first one would be history collection. So the physician or the nurse would collect history, detailed history from the patient. 
So by that, we will get to know an idea about uh, the signs and symptoms which are experiencing by the patient or is there any risk factor which is associated with the appendicitis. Another important investigation is physical examination. Other than that, we may conduct laboratory investigations such as complete blood count, WBC. Specifically in WBC, there will be an increase in the leukocytes. So in leukocytes, it would be more than 10,000 per cubic mm and neutrophil count would be more than 75%. If you see the findings of X-ray, ultrasonography as well as CT scan, these findings indicate uh, increased density or abdominal distension in right lower quadrant. In case of histological examination, it will show a transmural neutrophilic infiltration which indicates presence of acute appendicitis. Now let's see what are the differential diagnosis related to acute appendicitis. First one would be ectopic pregnancy. Next, pseudo-appendicitis, metal diverticulum, inflammatory bubble syndrome, gastroenteritis, colon cancer, urolithiasis, as well as urinary tract infections. The main complications of appendicitis includes inflammatory appendiceal mass, appendiceal abscess, cancerous appendicitis, perforated appendix, and pyeliflebitis. So my dear friends, let us see the management or treatment of appendicitis. The first one would be parenteral analgesics. So in case of parenteral analgesics, opioids are preferred than NSAIDs because of the antiplatelet action of NSAIDs which may increase the risk of hemorrhage as well as GI anesthetic leak. IV fluids. This is to maintain the hydration and to prevent the dehydration which is caused by recurrent vomiting. Even electrolyte repletion also is important because the acute appendicitis may result in recurrent vomiting which may cause hypokalemia. Empiric IV antibiotics such as cefoxitin, cephalosporins are usually preferred in case of acute appendicitis treatment. Parenteral antiemetics are also preferred such as 5-HTT receptors, N2 receptors and D2 receptors. NG-tube insertion is also another choice in they, those patients who have recurrent vomit. Surgery usually would be conducted in the form of appendectomy. It can be open appendectomy or laparoscopic appendectomy or interval appendectomy. Percutaneous drainage is usually performed in case of uh, appendicite, appendiceal abscess if it is more than 4 cm. So these are the different steps of managing an acute I hope I have covered all about acute appendicitis. If you really like this video, please press the like button and also subscribe to my channel for getting more videos in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.